For over three millennia, Babylon stood as an indomitable testament to the ancient world, a majestic city that witnessed the grandeur and demise of mighty empires. Nestled along the banks of the Euphrates, this historic metropolis emerged as a cultural and political epicenter, leaving an enduring imprint on human history. Mesopotamia had already enjoyed a long history prior to the emergence of Babylon, with Sumerian civilization being present in the region for nearly 2,000 years before the migration of the Akkadian-speaking Semitic people, who would go on to found Akkad, Assyria, and Babylonia, appearing somewhere around the dawn of the 3rd millennium BC. During this period, Mesopotamia had been dominated by largely Sumerian cities and city-states, but as the cultures of the Sumerian and Akkadian speakers began to mix, Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as a spoken language of Mesopotamia, and Semitic Akkadian names began to appear on the king lists of some of these states. In 2334 BC, the Akkadian Empire saw the Akkadian Semites and Sumerians of Mesopotamia unite under one rule. The Akkadians fully attained ascendancy over the Sumerians. The empire eventually disintegrated in 2154 BC due to economic decline and civil war, followed by attacks from the Gudians, who originated from the Zagros Mountains and would rule from 2141 to 250 BC until Sumer rose up again with the third dynasty of Ur, which would defeat and force the Gudians from South Mesopotamia in 2161 BC as the Neo-Sumerian Empire would come to dominate much of the region. But in 2002 BC, the empire collapsed at the hands of the Elamites. As the Mesopotamian city-states reasserted their independence, the Amorites, a foreign people from the northern Levant, began to migrate south, gradually gaining control over most of southern Mesopotamia, where they formed a series of small kingdoms. Around 1894 BC, an Amorite chieftain named Summa Abum took over the relatively small city of Babylon turning his newly acquired lands into a state in its own right. His reign was concerned with establishing statehood amongst a sea of other minor city-states and kingdoms in the region. However, Sumu Abum never gave himself the title of King of Babylon, suggesting that Babylon itself was still only a minor town and not worthy of kingship. His successors all ruled in the same vague manner, as Babylonia remained a small nation which controlled very little territory and was overshadowed by neighboring kingdoms that were both older, larger, and more powerful. Upon the ascension of Babylon's sixth Amorite ruler Hammurabi in 1792 BC, he conducted major building work in Babylon, expanding it from a small town into a great city. A very efficient ruler, he established a bureaucracy with taxation and a centralized government. Hammurabi would free Babylon from Elamite dominance and drove the Elamites from southern Mesopotamia entirely. He then systematically conquered southern Mesopotamia. His conquests gave the region stability from turbulent times, turning the patchwork of small states into a single nation. Hammurabi then turned his disciplined armies eastward and conquered Elam. To the west, he conquered the Amorite states of the Levant, including the powerful kingdoms of Mari and Yamad. Hammurabi then entered into a protracted war with the old Assyrian Empire for control over Mesopotamia and dominance of the Near East. After a protracted struggle over decades with the powerful Assyrian kings, Hammurabi forced Assyria to pay tribute to Babylon in 1751 BC. He also moved the major religious center of southern Mesopotamia to Babylon, 
making Marduk supreme in the pantheon of southern Mesopotamian gods. However, southern Mesopotamia had no natural defensible borders, making it vulnerable to attack. And after the death of Hammurabi, his empire began to disintegrate rapidly. Under his successor Samsu Ilun, the far south of Mesopotamia was lost to the native Akkadian-speaking Selan dynasty. The Assyrians also revolted and drove the Babylonians from much of northern Mesopotamia, forcing the Amorite rulers to survive in a much reduced Babylon. Samsu Ilun's successor, Abi Esha, made a vain attempt to recapture the Selan dynasty from Babylon, but was decisively defeated. By the end of his reign, Babylonia had shrunk to a small and relatively weak nation. His successors would be in too weak a position to make any attempt to regain the lost territories, contenting themselves with peaceful building projects in Babylon itself. Samsu Datana was to be the last Amorite ruler of Babylon. Early in his reign, he came under pressure from the Kassites, a people originating in the mountains of what is today northwest Iran. Babylon was then sacked by the Anatolian-based Hittites in 1595 BC. Shamshu Datana was overthrown by the Hittite king Mursil I. However, the Hittites did not remain for long. They were simply after plunder, but the destruction wrought by them finally enabled their Kassite allies to gain control. Agum II took the throne for the Kassites in 1595 BC. The new king retained peaceful relations with the native Mesopotamian king of Assyria. He also successfully went to war with the Hittite Empire, recovered the sacred statue of Marduk, which had been taken in the sack 24 years earlier. Agum III would lead a large campaign against the Selan dynasty, finally conquering the far south of Mesopotamia for Babylon. From there, he extended further south, invading the pre-Arab state of Dilmun. When Kuragalzu succeeded to the throne, he soon came into conflict with Elam. Kuragalzu launched a campaign which resulted in the defeat and capture of the Elamite capital of Susa. After this, a puppet ruler was placed on the Elamite throne, subject to Babylon. He also built a new capital, Dur Kuragalzu, transferring administrative rule from Babylon. Berna Bariash II ascended to the throne in 1359 BC. The resurgent Middle Assyrian Empire to the north was now encroaching into northern Babylon, and as a symbol of peace, the Babylonian king took the daughter of the powerful Assyrian king in marriage. His successor, who was half Assyrian, and the grandson of the Assyrian king was killed in 1333 BC by usurpers. This enraged the Assyrians who invaded and sacked Babylon, subsequently annexing Babylonian territory and installing Kuragalzu II as the vassal ruler of Babylon. Soon after, in 1327 BC, Kuragalzu attacked Assyria in an attempt to reassert Babylonian power. After some initial successes, he was ultimately defeated and lost yet more territory to Assyria. Assyria would again invade under the reign of Kashtilash IV, whose reign ended catastrophically as the Assyrian king routed his armies, sacked and burned Babylon, setting himself up as king. An Assyrian governor was placed on the throne to rule as viceroy to the Assyrian king. Babylon did not begin to recover until late in the reign of Adad Shumer Usher as he too remained a vassal of Assyria until 1193 BC. After independence, he was able to prevent the Assyrian king from retaking Babylon, which, apart from its northern reaches, had mostly shrugged off Assyrian domination. His successor, Meli Shipak II, had a peaceful reign. Despite not being able to regain northern Babylonia from Assyria, no further territory was lost. And the late Bronze Age collapse now affecting the world seemed initially to have little impact on Babylonia. War resumed under the subsequent kings, 
as the Assyrians resumed expansionist policies and further conquered parts of North Babylon. The Elamites invaded as well, eventually conquering most of eastern Babylon. The final Kassite king was finally overthrown in 1155 BC, ending the Kassite dynasty. The Elamites did not remain in control of Babylonia long, instead entering into an ultimately unsuccessful war with Assyria, allowing the fourth dynasty of Babylon from Isin to be established with the very first Akkadian-speaking Mesopotamian dynasty to rule Babylonia. The new king successfully drove out the Elamites and prevented any possible Kassite revival. Nebuchadnezzar I would fight and defeat the Elamites, invading Elam itself, sacking the Elamite capital of Susa and recovering the sacred statue of Marduk that had been carried off from Babylon during the fall of the Kassites. However, Nebuchadnezzar failed to extend Babylonian territory further, being defeated a number of times by the king of Assyria. Nebuchadnezzar was succeeded by his two sons, who lost huge sways of territory to Assyria. Following this, a terrible famine gripped Babylon, inviting attacks and migrations from the northwest Semitic tribes of Aramaeans and Sudians. In 1072 BC, Assyria invaded Babylonia, deposing the king and placing Adad Apla and Edina on the throne as his vassal. Assyrian domination continued through 1050 BC when the Middle Assyrian Empire descended into a period of civil war, allowing Babylonia to once again largely free itself from the Assyrian yoke for a few decades. However, East Semitic-speaking Babylonia soon began to suffer further repeated incursions from Western Semitic nomadic people migrating from the Levant during the Bronze Age collapse, and during the 11th century BC, Large swathes of the Babylonian countryside was occupied by these newly arrived Aramaeans and Sudians. The weak Babylonian kings being unable to stop these migrations. The ruling Babylonian dynasty was deposed by marauding Aramaeans in 1026 BC, and the heart of Babylonia, including the capital itself, descended into an anarchic state, as no king was to rule Babylon for over 20 years. However, in southern Mesopotamia, the 5th dynasty arose. This was ruled by Simbar Shepik, leader of a Kassite clan, and was in effect a separate state from Babylon. The south Mesopotamian dynasty was replaced by another 6th Kassite dynasty, which also seems to have regained control over Babylon itself. Babylonia remained weak during this period with whole areas of Babylonia now under firm Aramean and Sudian control. Babylonian rulers were often forced to bow to pressure from Assyria and Elam. A further migration of nomads from the Levant in the early 9th century BC caused even more chaos. With the arrival of the Chaldeans, they settled in the far southeast of Babylonia. From 911 BC, with the founding of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, Babylon found itself once again under the domination and rule of its fellow Mesopotamian state for the next three centuries. Adad Nirari II twice attacked and defeated the Babylonians. He also sacked Babylon itself, subjugating most of Mesopotamia. Babylonia briefly fell to the Chaldean ruler Marduk Apla Usur, who ascended to the throne in 780 BC, taking advantage of a period of civil war in Assyria. Shalmansur IV attacked him and retook northern Babylon. However, he was allowed to remain on the throne, successfully stabilized the part of Babylonia he controlled, but under his successors it would fall back into chaos. The Babylonian king Nabonassar overthrew the Chaldean usurpers in 748 BC and successfully stabilized Babylonia. However, with the ascension of a new Assyrian king, Babylonia was invaded and sacked, and Nabonassar was reduced to vassalage. His successors were also in servitude to Assyria, 
In 722 BC, Marduk Apla Idina, the second, a Chaldean chieftain, fomented revolt against Assyrian domination, assisted by strong Elamite support. They managed to take the throne of Babylon itself between 721 and 710 BC, whilst the Assyrian king Sargon II was otherwise occupied, though they were eventually defeated and expelled. The new Assyrian king Esarhaddon ruled Babylon personally, completely rebuilding the city. Upon his death and in an effort to maintain harmony within his vast empire, he installed his oldest son as a subject king in Babylon, and his younger in the more senior position as king of Assyria. Despite being an Assyrian himself, Shamash Shemukin, after decades subject to his brother, raised a major revolt. He led a powerful coalition of peoples also resentful of Assyrian subjugation and rule. After a bitter struggle, he was defeated as Babylon was sacked and its allies vanquished. An Assyrian governor was placed on the throne to rule on behalf of the Assyrian king. Upon Ashurbanipal's death in 627 BC, his son became ruler of Babylon and Assyria. However, Assyria soon descended into a series of brutal internal civil wars, which were to cause its downfall. Babylonia took advantage of this and rebelled under Nabopolassar, a previously unknown chieftain of the Chaldeans. When Nabopolassar entered the Babylonians and Chaldeans into alliance with Cyoxerus, the king of the Iranian peoples. While the Assyrian king was fully occupied fighting rebels, the coalition launched a surprise attack on the Assyrian heartlands. From this point on, the coalition fought in unison against a civil war ravaged Assyria. The fighting continued until 607 BC, when he was finally defeated. The seat of the empire was then transferred to Babylonia, for the first time since Hammurabi over a thousand years before. Nabopolsar was succeeded by his son, Nebuchadnezzar II, whose reign of 43 years made Babylon once more the ruler of much of the civilized world, taking over portions of the former Assyrian Empire, with the northeastern portion being taken by the Medes. Nebuchadnezzar II campaigned against the Egyptians and drove them back over the Sinai. However, an attempt to take Egypt itself as his Assyrian predecessors had succeeded in doing failed mainly due to a series of rebellions from the Levant. The Babylonian kings crushed these rebellions, deposed Jeroakim, the king of Judah, and deported a sizable part of the population to Babylonia. In the reign of Nabonidus, who was the son of an Assyrian priestess, a number of factors arose which would ultimately lead to the fall of Babylon. Nabonidus and Belshazzar's Assyrian heritage is also likely to have added to this resentment. It was in the sixth year of Nabonidus that Cyrus the Great, the Achaemenid Persian, revolted against Astyages, the king of the Medes. Three years later, Cyrus had become king of all Persia. Meanwhile, Nabonidus had established a camp in the desert of his colony of Arabia, leaving his son Belshazzar in command of the army. In 539 BC, Cyrus invaded Babylonia. Nabonidus fled to Babylon where he was pursued. Two days later, the soldiers of Cyrus entered Babylon without fighting, ending the Babylonian Empire. One of the first acts of Cyrus was to allow the Jewish exiles to return to their homes. The permission to do so was embodied in a proclamation whereby the conqueror justified his claim to the Babylonian throne. Alexander the Great later conquered Babylon in 333 BC for the Greeks, and died there in 323 BC. Babylonia and Assyria then became part of the Greek Seleucid Empire. Under Seleucos, the foundation of Seleucia diverted the population to the new capital of southern Mesopotamia and the ruins of the old city became a quarry for the builders of the new seat of government. Spanning more than three millennia, Babylon had asserted itself as an unyielding testament to the ancient world. 
etching an enduring print on the pages of human history.